So I'm going to cover today how to hold people accountable, how to get them to do what they do not want to do. That's ultimately what accountability is. Let me give you an idea of why that's the case. Think of the things that you want in your life that you don't have or in your business, any area. Now, ultimately, if it's humanly possible to actually get those things, usually, 99% of the time, the reason why you don't have those things is because there's certain things that you just haven't done or you haven't done enough of those things in order to ultimately produce the result that you want. Now, you might be playing full out already, and then it's just a matter of time uh, before you actually get that. But most of the time, for most human beings, it's because you're just not doing the actions. You're not taking the actions. Now, why wouldn't you take an action to get you something that you actually want? It's because the thing that you've got to do, the action you've got to take, is something that you don't want to do. So the things that you don't want to do ultimately get you what you want that you don't yet have. So what happens is the brain fries because it's thinking, I want that, but I really want to avoid that. And you get these two different signals in your brain. So ultimately, what an accountability coach provides is they get you to do the things you don't want to do to get you what you really want that you don't yet have. It's pretty powerful stuff. So that's really the definition of accountability. Getting other people to do what they wouldn't normally do, what they don't want to do, in order to ultimately get the results they want and to get them to do it consistently enough to produce those results. So what do you do to hold somebody accountable? Well, step one is awareness. The first thing you want to do with your client to hold them accountable to something that they said they would do but they're not doing is they need to be aware that that's going on. Half the time people aren't even aware that they said and promised one thing and they didn't even do it or they did something completely different. And so you got to raise that awareness. A lot of ways that you can do this. So I'll give you a couple examples. The first step to awareness is look for the cover-up. Now what do I mean by the cover-up? Well, when someone doesn't do what they say they'll do, especially in a coaching context when they probably committed to it officially and they come back to the next call and they didn't follow through, there's usually something they're covering up. What I mean by that is they'll say something like, well, gee, uh, John, I, you know, I, I just didn't have time. <laughs> or, you know, J John, I, I tried to, I, I got started with it, but it, it was really hard, and then all these other things came up, and I had to handle this. Or they'll say, oh, I got this great opportunity. It took all my time, but it's really fantastic. Let me tell you about it. And they'll do whatever they can to cover up what really stopped them, which is step two to the process, which is the cause. So you want to get them aware that, number one, what is it that they're covering up or what are they using to cover whatever that is up with and then get beneath that and get to the actual cause of what had them not do it so an example would be uh, hey are you aware first of all that you committed to this and that you didn't follow through well well yeah but uh, gee you know I, I didn't really have time because I was focused on this other stuff that made me a lot of money it was really fantastic Okay, got it. Let me ask you this. What does that cover up? I mean, I got, I got that things were really successful for you this week and you brought on some really great things, but what else had you not do this or what really had you not follow through on what you committed to that that whole story about how great things are is kind of covering up? Now, when you confront your client like this, they might kind of push back a little bit, but drill down and really you got to be a stand and committed that that they really are covering something up, not because they're bad people, but just because this is part of being human. And so get them down to what really caused you not to do it. And what you'll find is a lot of times it's fear or they're being lazy or they just didn't care in the first place. They just made up a commitment just to placate you. All sorts of stuff that doesn't sound so good. The cause always has some teeth to it. It always doesn't sound very good to anybody, so they generally do not want to share it with people. In fact, you might even want to use that as a criteria to them saying what the cause is. You want to tell them, you know, John, uh, the cause of why you didn't do what you said doesn't sound good. In fact, you probably don't even want to admit it to yourself, but I know you don't want to admit it to me as your coach, and you probably wouldn't want to admit it to anybody else either. So that's the criteria. So let's find something that you really are kind of hiding 
or that you, you don't even really want to admit, but it's probably the case. Let's look for that. And be their partner in this process, but don't forget, you might have to kind of nail them a little bit, get in their face to get them to go through this first process of awareness, because it's kind of confronting for people. Step two is the impact. This is where you want to get your client clear on what the impact is of them not following through on what they gave their word to, them not following through on what they said that they would do. So what I mean by this is that there are a lot of impacts to not following through on what you promised. There's an impact on the coach, probably. There's an impact on them, I'm sure, on the client. There's an impact on other people in their lives. And there's probably an impact on their results as well. And with all the individuals, there's probably a psychological impact as well. There's an impact on how they feel and also how the coach feels. And so you can share what the impact is on you. You can say, gee, you know, I, I feel like I, don't, I can't expect anything from you. I feel like I can't trust you now. I feel like I'm wasting my time with you. And again, you don't have to yell at them when you're saying this, but it's going to be kind of confrontive. It's not going to sound very pretty to share this with them. So part of the impact is the impact on them and have them share that. What's the impact on you? How you feel, your life, the results you're getting. And then what's the impact on others as well? You know, how's this impact other people in your life? And have them share that with you. By the time they get into the impact, by the time they get to the end of this process, they may be in a little bit of pain. That's okay for them to experience some discomfort. That might even be part of the process. But the point with this is that they really want to get clear on uh, what's happening as a result of them breaking their word. Step three, commitment. Have them make a commitment to a new action or at least the action that they didn't follow through on. Have them recommit to that. And then the second aspect of the commitment is have them transform whatever it is that caused them to break their word. If they said, you know, I was afraid and I'm really being lazy, then have them transform that. Have them make a brand new commitment to what's going to really transform your laziness this week. What's going to have you break through that laziness? Not just take this action, but what's an exercise or something you can do to, to make sure that when laziness starts to show up for you, that you don't let that stop you from doing anything in your life. And that will create a kaleidoscopically multi-dimensional result for them because it's not just going to get them to take action on what they didn't do initially. It's also going to have them do all sorts of stuff they haven't even thought of yet as well. So it's time for practice. Go out there with your clients and take these three steps. Go through awareness. What's the cover-up? What's the real cause? What's really stopping them from following through on their word? Impact. What's the impact on them, on others, on their life, on their feelings? What's the impact on you? And share that with them and have them share vice versa. And then finally, commitment. Have them take action, commit to a new action, and commit to transforming whatever it was that was stopping them in that area of their life as well. So that's the end of part three of Learning Coaching Technology, where we've covered accountability and the three steps for producing that accountability with your clients. Go out there and enjoy.